Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says, For in Christ in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who's the head of all principality and power. I like to say it this way. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. In other words, you and I were identified with Christ in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We are happy to be back studying the Word of God. And this week we're studying really my favorite subject, which is studying who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ. We're using this book, uh, which is a brand new book just came out called How to Feed Your Faith. But really it's full of quotes um, that we have uh, collected, many of them from me and some from other people, on of faith and on who you are in Christ and on righteousness, redemption. Wonderful book. So it's um, great quotes that will ignite your faith. <laughs> just, some, just a few sentences can change the way you think. So the Lord blessed us with um, some, some different quotes over the years. We've, we're celebrating 50 years. So we decided to do a quote bit book. Actually, Trina's sister, Patsy, uh, encouraged me. She said, you just need to do a quote book. I said, well, I've got one, but it's, I need to do a new one. So here's the brand new one. Uh, you can have it for your offering of any amount. And we're going through quotes on who you are in Christ. And so we've had a great week, really, this week. I mean, the, the first few days, I think, made us about as happy as anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and all of the crew here, we all got oh, happy we love it. studying who you are yes. in Christ. So you get the quote book for your offering amount. You can contact Mark Hankins Ministries or just call or get on the website, markhankins.org. So we're talking about the in Christ reality or in what does Christ that mean? revelation. Actually, it's just um, when you make Jesus your Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature Old things are passed away. Everything has become new. If you go down a few more verses, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says that he was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we're talking about the phrase in Christ, in him or in whom is in the New Testament, primarily Paul's letters, 130 times. So one of our favorite ones is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But you can see there's 130 of those scriptures. And so we're talking about different quotes of what God did in Christ and who you are and what you have now in Him. Mm -hmm. So uh, we start off with 2 Corinthians 5, 17, but we went to Colossians 2, 9 and 10, where it says, for in Him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. And so we're talking about what happened in Christ, what God saw, what the angels saw, even what the devil saw, and now we're looking at what Paul saw yeah. in Paul's revelation, and that Paul's revelation was really not for Paul but it was for every believer. It was for the whole world. And so understanding Paul's revelation, you have to understand the two words in Christ when really it's just a preposition in and the word Christ. Mm -hmm. In him, in whom. So years ago when I first started studying, then uh, one of the writers said the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. So What's I mean, a preposition? I thought, prepositions? Some people might need a reminder. I said, what? Sounds like the English. key to the gospel is in the <laughs> prepositions. So a preposition is just a small word that is a connecting word that shows relationship. 
It connects nouns and pronouns with other nouns and pronouns and shows their relationship in whatever verb or action is taking place. So uh, little words like for, with, in, through, and by are prepositions that show our relationship to Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection, and even present-day ministry. So these prepositions, and the two words of the prepositions we could study is in Christ, mm -hmm. in him. So everything Jesus did, he did it for us, and it's set to the credit of our account that we were with him. Mm -hmm. In other words, in the two main ordinances in the church, which is water baptism and the Lord's Supper, both demonstrate our identification and union with Christ. Mm -hmm. So we're not apart from him trying to believe in him, but we actually are now joined to him in union with him our one translation says engrafted into him so that our spirit is now joined to Christ mm -hmm. and has the same life that's in him. So it's not a parallel because there's a lot of parallel yeah. type statements. You know, Jesus was crucified. We were crucified. Yeah. Jesus was buried. We were buried. Yeah. But those are not really parallel statements. Yeah. Those are statements of union. So someone said it this way, A.J. Gordon, I think, said, it is not a life running alongside of his, mm -hmm. taking shape from looking at him, but it actually is his life reenacted in the follower, his life in us. Mm -hmm. And he said, and that reality, he said, is what? Um, limitless in application. application and immortal in energy. In other words, the events that brought us into union with Christ are immortal, eternal in energy and limitless in application. So that means no matter what problem you're having with your salvation, your deliverance, your healing, from that place of union with mm -hmm. Christ, you overcome every situation, not mm -hmm. from a place of I'm trying to get better and I'm struggling, mm -hmm. but from a place of grace of what God has done for us in Christ. I think the, the word for, you know, yeah. substitution, it shows substitution that God put Jesus in the place where we should mm -hmm. have been. So he was wounded for yes. our transgressions, you know, yeah. bruise for our for our iniquities. Yeah. It's a very significant word, um, meaning it's a he was our substitute. Our substitute. He did it so that we could be removed yeah. from that. Yes. There's no and, way we can that pay condition, our own price. Yeah, could be removed. Some religions, you know, you've got to do so much work, so many yeah. things to earn your salvation or earn, yeah. you know, your way to heaven. But Jesus did it as our substitute for. Mm -hmm. So that's so significant. And, and you get a little picture of that in uh, Isaiah mm -hmm. 53. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, verse 4 through 6, where it says, Surely he has borne our grief mm -hmm. and carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. In other words, what happened on the cross is he has borne, the word born means NASA, and it means he has lifted it from us. That's the Hebrew word. NASA. Wow. And it literally means lifted it from us and carried far away. So, so while surely, you meditate on that, your sickness, your sin. He was made a curse for us. Taken he took far our sickness, away. took our poverty, took our pain. Surely he has borne NASA, lifted from us. Did it all our griefs and our sorrows. And actually Isaac Lesser translation says, surely he has borne our sicknesses, mm -hmm. carried our pains. Mm -hmm. So our griefs, our sorrows, our pains, that Christ redeemed us from the curse. How did he redeem us from the curse? Galatians 3.13, he was made a curse for us. And cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing 
of Abraham might come upon us, even the promise of the Holy Spirit. So when you see for, that means in our behalf as our substitute. Surely he has borne, lifted from us our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, mm -hmm. bruised for our iniquities, mm -hmm. and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are we healed. healed. Amen. We wow. are healed. So now there's your substitution, yep. substitution because we are healed. Mm -hmm. And then 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, we were healed. So it's already taken care of in the economy and the mind of God. So that's substitution for everything Jesus did. He did it for us and it's set to the credit of our account like we were with him. So when we grew up, you know, on Easter, we'd always sing, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when he died? Were you there when he was raised from the dead? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. So really what that song is about is is substitution and identification. We were there. In other words, he took our sin, our sorrow, our condition, mm -hmm. fully identified with our condition, mm -hmm. that in his resurrection, that we could have his life and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you call substitution and identification mm -hmm. and then union with Christ mm -hmm. in Christ engrafted into him. Mm -hmm. So these are all a part of what you'd call maybe Paul's mystery or what happened in the spirit. Right. So that's why revelation is uh, necessary for God to reveal things to you that are beyond just the sense realm. So it really takes more than just knowing Greek to get revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not just an intellectual thing. The Holy Spirit unlocks yes, he does. revelation yes, knowledge. He does. And the Holy Spirit actually shows you things. And, and God actually hides things from people who think they're so smart. He won't show it to them. And then he reveals things to people who who humble themselves hungry. and you cry out, you're hungry yeah. and say, God, I'm asking you mm -hmm. to give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Mm -hmm. That's really Paul's letter, in Ephesians one. And the number one need of probably every believer is father God, I'm asking you to give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The eyes of my heart flooded with light so I can know the hope of your calling, the inheritance that belongs to us as a believer, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in Amen. heavenly places, far above all principality and power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, yeah. but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. And no chapter division in Paul's letters. And he goes, and he made us alive together with and Christ. You. Amen. He, and he you, alive. he made us alive. So you personally begin to see your identification. I like how you say you began to see because yeah. there's this, no this end, right? Revelation knowledge never ends yeah. because we never get to the end of knowing him. Yeah. Like Paul said, I want to know him more in the fullness of his death. The power of his resurrection. Power of his, Death, yeah. yeah, and the power of his resurrection um, and being conformed into his image. So that's a, a continual process. And it happens as we look into the word of God, take those scriptures mm, and look substitution, at them. begin yeah. to look into there and the Holy Spirit will take you on a tour. If you've ever gone on a tour someplace, you know, some site, you don't know all the answers. You've never been there, but the tour guide does. And the Holy Spirit has been, He's you know, the tour guide. before creation been, <laughs> all the way through redemption to hell and back and heaven. He knows everything. He knows you and he knows how to take these mysteries yeah. that are so deep and wide and high, but make them so simple to you yeah. and speak your language where you get it and you go, oh, wow, 
I know that and now I'm free. Yeah. It's made a difference. I'm not just saying I know all this knowledge. So, no. So that I is necessary yes. to actually pray and ask God. Yes. Because God wants to, he enjoys revealing his word and revealing himself. But he says, you need to pray and you need to pray this prayer. Father, I'm asking you. So when does that end? Never your whole life. And Paul says after 30 years, think about Paul's revelation, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Fellowship is conformity to his death. Notice Paul really said, I want to know him, not just know about him. Mm -hmm. In other words, I want to know him and I meet him right here in what happened in his death and resurrection. Yeah. So you can know about Christ even in history and even the scriptures, but to know him, you must meet him at the cross. Right. You meet him where his blood was shed. You meet him where he was raised from the dead. And so Paul's revelation actually progressive, continually got bigger and greater and stronger. And so when you pray that prayer that I may know, that I may see for myself what happened when God raised Christ from the dead. And the, the result of that knowledge, that kind of knowledge, knowing God is a transformation, a complete transformation, mm. you know, and that's a process. When we're born again, that's instant, you know. And the the uh, illustration of the caterpillar to the butterfly mm -hmm. is the transformation. Radical change. After mm -hmm. you've been born again, there is another radical transformation where you, the knowledge of who you are, yeah, it begins to grow wings. <laughs> yeah. You you change how you look. You change where you can go. You're transformed by the uh, glory of a new mind and a new mind yeah. meditating on this truth. The renewing yeah. of your mind. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, Dad Hagen said your mind does not stay renewed no. any more than your hair stays combed. So we can but be transformed people, every your day. Your hair doesn't stay <laughs> renewed any, any more than your teeth stay brushed. That in other happens words, you every need to time, do that every again. morning we get transformed. <laughs> yeah, you look a lot better. If it's so, a hair. <laughs> so that prayer is really a prayer for you personally, mm -hmm. not just, um, um, you know, the whole world. Right. You have a personal experience with revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. I like to say it this way. Um, God's kingdom system of revelation knowledge yeah. has never been hacked. I like that one. See, the word <laughs> hacked means no one's ever been able to break into it and steal the information. You can steal information, but you cannot steal revelation. Paul's letters are revelation, more than just information that you can learn with your right. intellect. It's literally unlocked by the Spirit of God, unlocked by God. Hallelujah. And so that prayer encourages you to pray the prayer. And so get this book called Feed Your Faith, the quotes. So here's one quote. I haven't even got to it yet on who you are and what you have in Christ. It says the same power that's in the actual events of the death and resurrection of Christ is in the message of the gospel. The devil is just as afraid of the message as he is of the events. Amen. And so get the book on Feed Your Faith, quotes that will ignite your faith. All you have to do is contact markhankins.org. Go to the website. Some happy person will answer the phone. <laughs> you can have this book for an offering Ooh. of any amount. Well, wow. and so anything you send, it'll be a blessing to help us keep preaching the gospel. If you're not a partner, I encourage you just to say, I'd like to be a monthly partner. We, we appreciate that so much and thank all of our partners. And you can help us with our new conference center. It is about 85% finished. We've spent about two and a half to $3 million cash already. We still need approximately four or $500,000. Not there. sure the exact amount, mm -hmm. but... Your partnership, all it needs is like another 
four or 500 people to send $1,000 and all the money coming for the conference center. If you want to send more, fine. If you want to send less, fine. Everything you send helps us and we'll finish the conference center and be a new TV studio and we'll reach 400 million people every day with the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. Right. So thank you for your partnership. You can also download Mark Hankins Ministries app. It is free and you can watch every TV program, including this one, repeat it again, or you can listen to it on the app. Wow. So get the book, Feed Your Faith, quotes that will ignite and set your faith on fire. Mm. Your identification with Christ and who you are in Him. Wow. Until next time, may God bless you. And remember, never allow your struggle to be your identity. In other words, see who you are in the Word and who you are in Christ and declare, that's who I am and that's what I have in Christ. So may God richly bless you and Jesus is Lord. Mark and Trina invite you to the Supernatural Leadership Conference, March 5th through the 8th in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have a power-packed lineup of speakers featuring our host pastors, Mark and Trina, Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, Mac and Lynn Hammond, and more. This is a life-changing event you won't want to miss with practical instructions, powerful prayer services, anointed worship, and times of refreshing in the presence of God. Join us Mark 5th through the 8th and take your leadership to another supernatural level. Register today at markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Jesus did not go through the agony of death, burial, and resurrection to help us just a little bit. Everything changed from the cross to the throne in those three days. God wants you to understand who you are and what you have now in Christ. Learn your true identity with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ. Many Christians talk about what they're trying to be, what they need to be, and what they wish to be. But there is no need to struggle to find your identity and God's purpose for your life. You put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. You have a supernatural identity in Christ, and you must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. God will show you who you are in Christ with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It doesn't matter what you may be going through, failure is not an option. In Pastor Mark's brand new book, Feed Your Faith, you will find that it is full of quotes that will feed your faith on these topics. Faith, confession, in Christ, righteousness, the Holy Spirit, the love and joy of God, and much more. You learn to walk in victory every day. Here at Mark Hankins Ministries, we are called to train and equip believers worldwide. This is why our vision is to translate our books into more than 100 languages. Visit markhankins.org or call 318-767-2001 and join us in partnership to carry the message of faith around the world. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We pray that you were blessed and you received so much from the word from my parents. Our offer this week is my dad's new book, Feed Your Faith. It's quotes that will ignite your faith. And we have quotes on pretty much every subject. We've got faith, confession, in Christ, righteousness, the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord, the love of God, the honor of God, and generosity. And one of my favorite quotes in this book is Smith Wigglesworth says, any man can be changed by faith, no matter how he may be fettered, no matter how he may be bound. We want to offer you this book for your gift of any amount plus shipping. So go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. Have a great day. We want to thank all the Mark and Trina Hankins Ministries partners Amen. who have made this ministry possible. Praise the And Lord. the word is working mightily here.
For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible, seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the Word on every avenue possible, broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do His part and make sure the Word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can. Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, VTN, and the Word Network, and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the Word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the Word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the Word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration, and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.